Hi everyone, and a warm welcome to Low Season Traveller Insider Guides. This past month, we were invited over to the islands of Tahiti by our good friends at Tahiti Tourism so that we could learn exactly what the experience is like for visitors during the low season period. The islands of Tahiti are arguably among the most stunningly beautiful in the world. Formed from the demise of three volcanoes, these islands have not only an incredible natural beauty, but they also have an ancient, rich and diverse cultural heritage which remains strong to this day. In this series, we seek to learn more about the traditions, beliefs, culture and heritage as we set out to discover the true essence of Tahiti when we meet the Tahitians. Episode 4 Matahi Matahi Tutave is a cultural guide and proud Tahitian who runs a wonderful organisation called Haruru. We caught up with Matahi during a day out with him at the home of the Haruru organisation deep in the Papanu Valley to learn more about the work of Haruru and why it has a vitally important role in ensuring that the next generation learn about and embrace their Polynesian cultural heritage. As Matahi tells me in this episode, we cannot think too much about the immense cultural heritage which has been lost already, but we must instead focus on protecting and preserving what is left. Enjoy. Uh, my name is Matahi Tutava. Uh, part of my family is from this valley. I'm a journalist, uh, recently uh, a freelancer, video uh, creator, but also a storyteller. And I'm, on top of that, I'm also a member of uh, How Do Organization, who takes care of the, the place we are here today. And where are we here today? Tell, tell everybody, because we, we've, had, we've had a fabulous tour um, for the past sort of three, four hours, where we've come to the, the inland part of Tahiti, and um, it's, it's quite a magical place, isn't it? What's, what's the importance of this particular place where we are now? It is, it's quite a magical place, like you say. Uh, and what's more is that this place was inhabited for uh, uh, more than 100 years. Uh, so we're standing in Farihape right now. Farihape means the house of the caterpillar uh, and, and this is where we welcome people, families, school children, uh, anybody, really tourists, um, to spend a few days and nights away from town, away from the struggles of the, the coastline and the city and immerse themselves in this valley, in our culture, in our language. Absolutely love that. And it does feel, even though we're only, probably if we were to drive non-stop, what is it like? An hour away from Papierte? Um, it's about longer than that, a little bit, because the road is quite bumpy, like you saw that. Yeah, very uh, bumpy. But it's uh, you have to deserve this place. Yeah, yeah. You earn it. You earn you it. You earn it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, but once you're here, it's so peaceful. Yeah. Uh, there's no light pollution uh, at nighttime, and um, even local people love to come here to get away from pollution and, and all the chit chat of the yeah. of the city. And the noise pollution as well, by the way. Noise pollution. You know, yeah. as soon as soon as you you know the, you stop the vehicle and you get out, it's it's just the sounds of nature. Hopefully, the microphones here will, will pick up on that as well. But you just hear the sounds of nature, and yes. you, you feel that all of a sudden you you have a chance to to breathe and just just be really as much as anything. Exactly, it's really important to be aware of uh, our surroundings. Water is a big part here; is a big element, mm. big energy. Um, that's why our, our god here, the main god, is Tane. And, and around you, you have uh, so many mountains. As soon as you step uh, here inside this caldera, you feel the peace. And, and I think it's really important, especially now, nowadays, when uh, we have a lot of um, things like iPads and iPhones and, and, and all those things that take us away from reality, basically. Uh, and reality is also this our culture and, and the basic. It uh, teaches us to come back to the, the basics and appreciate it, as well as uh, listening, listening to the environment, of course, but listening to our elders, and this is what we do here. Listening to our elders and what they have to say, uh, which is also part of my job as a storyteller. Uh, I've decided to move away from the news uh, industry and, and get uh, more into uh, story first with my families and, and interview and get deeper into those concepts because unfortunately 
historians or people who wrote about us and our history were most often white people. Mm -hmm. And so we need to rewrite that or part of it or relearn anyways. And um, knowing the language is a key, is key to that. And this is what we do here, part of what we do here in Farehape. Okay, so when people come here, if you know, if, if school, groups of school children come here, they they learn more about the language, they're more as well as the customs. Um, they come different. Different groups have different agendas, obviously, mm. but the language is key to it. And we, especially for the children or, or the teenager, we basically show them. We don't teach them so much, but we we show them who they are uh, and their heritage and how. How strong it is, is still is, you know, even after 250 years of colonization, uh, and then it's something they should be proud of it. And then uh, we also have a big um, part in, in tying ourselves to our cousins, the Hawaiians, the Maori, and all the, the people in the Pacific, uh, because we don't have all the answers. Uh, and so it's really interesting and exciting actually to see what uh, everybody is doing in their own communities and bring it back here. And so oftentimes we also welcome uh, delegation groups of people from uh, Aotearoa, Hawaii, uh, Rapa Nui and all those beautiful islands that surround us because uh, eventually we are one people. Uh, we got divided by uh, the colonial powers and there's a movement that, that, that is pulling us towards back towards us. And we always say that the ocean is not a frontier, it's not a barrier, but it's, a, a, it's what connects us all. It's a bridge. It's a bridge, exactly. Yeah. Our canoes or bridge, bridges. How strong is the movement and how much in danger do you feel the, the culture is here? Um, I, I'm trying to get to be optimistic and then see the, the goodness and, and the positive. So I don't look so much uh, at what we lost, but at what we retained. And this is what I'm after. So in family who still have stories, obviously I'm not going to interview them about what they lost, but about the names, the stories, their little stories. And, and some of them, a lot of our old people will tell you, I don't have anything to say. It's not interesting. You know, young people are not interested in those stories. But I love that. I did, this is exactly what we are after today. Uh, is those bits and pieces that actually make a big, a huge difference into... Uh, connecting again with our own history names um, a lot of names over here got were lost mm -hmm. for so many generation and we slowly recovered them and it makes so much more sense when you come here to know that Fari Hape for instance means um, the house of the caterpillar and it's tied to so many stories of this particular place and behind those stories if you have the keys if you have to the, the, um, uh, if you understand the metaphors uh, it's you just I mean all, oh, and then you realize that you have we have connections to other islands too. Um, so really, to answer your question, uh, I I I feel strongly that we've lost a lot, and if we don't do anything right now, uh, we will lose more. But I think also that our language is not dead yet. Even after 250 years, we're still here. We still very much alive, and our culture, our language, um, and ourselves, our kids. I hear and they represent uh, different cultures, not just one culture. We also mm -hmm. represent that part of, of us that, that is Euro European. Um, and this is, uh, this is a beauty, this is beautiful. And so learning how to live together and how to be Tahitian, but in, in this multicultural world, uh, I think it's the next challenge. Uh, and when I say Tahitian, I mean uh, Polynesian in, in a bigger, bigger sense. Sure. And finally, um, obviously I'm here representing, I suppose I'm representing a part of the, the tourism industry as much as anything else. And um, what I'd like to know is how can the tourism industry and moreover, how can tourists, how can they help you in your aim to protect and preserve the cultural heritage of the islands? I think, first of all, if tourism has to work, if tourism is really something we want here, we need to uh, to welcome people, not just tourists, but anybody who comes, um, and, and make sure that we are here in our own house. And there's a, a famous say from Orihiro, who's a, a famous poet, uh, who said, how can I 
welcome you if you come into your own house. <laughs> and and so that, you know, it summarized everything. Mm -hmm. and, and he was, of course, talking to the mainly to the French people. But it's also a question for us. Do you feel home? What is home? Uh, are you connected to that home that you're talking about? So it's all of that that, 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 that profoundly moves me when we talk about tourism it's just a, a surface it, tourism is not going to help us be better people we have to do it mm -hmm. and we also have to find solution so that tourism is actually a, um, an industry that will help us in different aspects maybe cultural revitaliz revitalization or, or, or else mm -hmm. uh, and so um, I'm hoping too that tourism is because it's changing the markets are changing tourists are more um, more aware of, of the history of each places they go to, um, more aware that also there's also big stereotypes out there, still out there yeah. about for Tahiti with, with so many stereotypes and uh, uh, about the Wahine, for instance, the pretty girls, uh, half naked girls, and all of that is actually dangerous. Um, not so much for the tourists, but for us because our young people right now, that's how they see themselves mm. through the lens. Of those stereotypes that were yeah. made up by Hollywood in the 60s yeah. so it's really dangerous so education is key and I, I believe that tourism uh, is, is also here uh, uh, as a partner I guess for our culture and in the environment as well but uh, we have to be smart about it I hope so and I, I hope that uh, any tourists that do come here I hope that they truly come here to to learn and understand about the cultural heritage um, of Tahiti and the islands um, and I hope that they return as ambassadors for that cultural heritage when they get back and I know that I certainly will be an ambassador for Tahiti and the islands when I go back and spread that message. Yeah, Maruru, we're feeding them our history, our language, our uh, everything we've got and it's fun, you know, it's not just uh, like a big history class or lesson <laughs> when you come here, uh, but it's also oh, because we are true, we try to be true to ourselves, so we can deliver the truth. And we we don't see tourists as um, as people who just come and spend the money, and then we can tell them anything pretty much we want to hear or we want them to hear, and that's it. Uh, and, and in that sense, we need to be true to ourselves first. Yeah. Brilliant. Mahuru, thank you so much. Mahuru.